What is up, comic fam? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and I'm super pumped to make this video. It's a very special video today. I'm really excited to get right into it. But before we do, check this out. All right, so today I am surrounded by books, all kinds of books. I have a, basically seven questions to answer brought to you by the guys over at Blastin' and Stash and Comics. They decided to do a uh, a contest, and it's a video entry contest. And uh, to enter, you have to make a video answering seven questions that they put out. And the questions are designed to make you think, to have fun, as well as to give you a chance to show off your collection and talk about your perspective on the hobby, which I'm excited to do because this gave me an opportunity after the kids went to bed to go hang out in the man cave and just flip through old back issues and really just kind of uh, have fun looking at my own collection. And I'll get to share a big piece of it with you as well as enter this awesome contest. And what the contest is, is the Would You Rather Part 2 contest, hashtag hot dog and tater tots. So Huey, Joe, and Mike over at Blast and Stash and Comics are doing this contest where you make this video entry, you post it to anything, doesn't matter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, put, if you have a YouTube channel, you can put it there just anywhere at all. As long as you uh, answer these seven questions, it puts you in the running to get a massive mystery box from each of these guys. So you get three separate boxes, one from each member of the channel. And these guys are avid collectors. They've been collecting for a long time. These aren't just little dollar bin books. It's going to be something epic that they're going to be presenting to the winner. So uh, without further ado, I'm excited to go down this list with you guys. I'm excited to show you all these books to answer these questions and explain why there's some softball ones, but some of them are really tough, especially for me being a fan of uh, a lot of these properties. Um, I'm a specific fan of numerous ones of these properties, and uh, I'm also kind of a an anti-fan of some of it. So I'm, I'm going to have a blast with this. So let's get right into it. Question number one that they uh, ask you to answer is, do you take the path of the Sith or the Jedi? So immediately I went to the collection and I grabbed my Star Wars number one from Marvel Comics. Now, this is the $1.25 price one, which I don't care. I scored this in a, a, a collection buy uh, about a year and a half ago that my wife actually caught somebody about to walk into a store with a few boxes of comics. And we intercepted him in the parking lot and bought his entire collection off of him, got tons of keys out of it. And this was one of the uh, minor keys that were in it. So would I take the path of the Jedi or the Sith? After looking at this for a little while, after thinking about it for a little while and just really looking at what all the Jedi do and what all the Sith do, I think I would have to go with my main guys, the Sith. And this is that John Jang exclusive Star Wars adventures of Darth Vader. And why would I go with the Sith? Well, for one, they look a lot cooler. You know what I mean? They just they look awesome. They're not walking around in bathrobes all day. I mean, that's been done before. Hugh Hefner's done it. He's done it better. So I'm not trying to walk around with bathrobes, hang out with a bunch of kids or younglings all day. I mean, Anakin had the right idea. He fixed that problem for his generation. But these guys just get to do what they want. You know, they they live the good life. And they're just awesome. So I would definitely have to take the path of the Sith like my man John Jang did when he made this beautiful Star Wars Adventures Darth Maul cover. As you see, they're both foil and signed. So, Sith it is. That's question number one. Question number two was definitely a difficult one for me. Kinda. And it wouldn't be as difficult if it wasn't for the fact that something came out recently that just really struck a chord with me. So, question number two is, if you could only pick one of these two options for the rest of your life, what would it be? And the options are to continue with the ability to read only Marvel or D Marvel and DC, so one category, or everything else, all the independents, Image, Boom, Aftershock, everyone, everyone else, or Marvel and DC. So that's tough because there's a couple of stories, especially here recently, that just really hit me. And anybody that keeps up with my content or knows me knows that I'm story over everything else. I'm a reader. I love to collect. But I'm a reader first. And here recently, that amazing story from the Miranda Brothers came out from Aftershock. And that was We Live. And this book's actually blowing up. The story's taking off. It's specking out right now. But there's We Live number one, that first print, that beautiful second print. And these are uh, wraparound gatefold covers. And that third print. And uh, not only that, but there's number two, number three. Number four, and finally number five. 
So I absolutely love this series. Fell in love with the characters, fell in love with the art. They had actual mixed media with this, where there's a soundtrack that went with it. And uh, if you didn't know, you can go back on my channel and check out where myself and new guy from the Cosmic Campfire were able to actually hang out and chat with these guys for a while uh, a couple months ago. So go check that out. There's a lot of big things coming from them. And that story, man, it just got me. Every issue was amazing, better than the one before. It kept you on your toes, kept you guessing. And I'm, I thought to myself when I was reading this question, what other stories hit me like that? And it wasn't one that hit me recently. Like when I was a kid, I remember in third grade, this book changed my life. I even did a, my uh, sixth grade book report on it. Long story, but almost got in trouble for doing it on a comic book. So I brought in the novelization and hardback of it and ended up getting an A on the book report. But that is none other than probably the greatest story of all time, in my opinion. Kingdom Come by Alex Ross and Mark Wade. So this one, I don't know what it was with it. It is just the story to end all stories for me. I was a huge, huge Captain Marvel fan growing up. I used to have a big chip on my shoulder, shoulder toward Superman. Now he's easily my favorite. When it comes to the stories, there's one that's just stuck with me for my entire life. It's still, I don't know, it's the foundation of a great comic book. When you ask me what book should I read before I die, this book is always on that list. When you tell me, uh, I love comic books. What should I read? I'll give you a long list and tell you you have to read them just to get the kingdom come to make it matter. So we live as one that's hit me recently in a similar way that the kingdom come has hit me. That's really just stayed with me for a long time. So I was on the fence, but I finally decided I landed on. It's going to have to be representing right there. Marvel and DC. And this right here is Superman 204, that iconic Jim Lee cover. I love Jim Lee. And then I had to pull out my Action Comics 1000, Gabriel Del Otto, and looking like Christopher Reeves sitting in the fortress. I love it. Absolutely love it. As you see, got Superman 2 on the wall there. And uh, I'm not just a DC fanboy. I love me some Incredible Hulk. So we got that Incredible Hulk in a 6.0. That's on issue 102. So this is really issue one of his first ongoing series since the original six numerous years before. And uh, what's any good Hulk fan without an Incredible Hulk 181? So for me, when it comes to indies or the big two, I'm taking the big two. The big two is what got me to fall in love with comics as a kid. That's where I learned how to read. And I'm, you know, I can never see indies taking that spot from the big two. So that was one of the bigger questions to answer. It was fun diving in the collection for that. But now here's a fun one. This one was really a no-brainer for me. It was if you're a comic book writer. And you can only have one artist work on your book. And you only have the choices of Rob Liefeld or Peach Momoko. Who would it be? Eesh, that's two very controversial artists. Rob Liefeld's been around for a while. He really exploded in the late 80s and massively exploded in the 90s when he left the Marvel and went to Image Comics and really made a name for himself. But Peach Momoko here in recent times exploded about two years ago. And everyone's really back and forth with her. You either love her or you hate her. There's no middle ground. So going through my collection, I've purged it of all of the peach trash that's in it. But I do have this one left in the collection. And that's the Power Rangers issue number one. I think this was the local comic shop day uh, exclusive foil. And as you can see, it's trash. Utter trash. It's, it's horrible, horrible work. So you can try, probably say the same thing about Rob Liefeld. Oh, the characters are all weird shaped and there's pockets everywhere and the guns don't make sense. And that's exactly what defined an entire decade of comics. So an entire decade of comics are defined artistically by a style this guy set in stone. Say what you want to say. The man's a legend. Oh, he can't draw feet. No, he can't. Those are horrible feet. But their feet, you know their feet. But look at the rest of it. That's a fantastic cover. Oh, blah, 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 blah. He gave us Deadpool. And there's the second appearance of Deadpool. Is this an overhead shot? Is he falling down? Who knows? And he also gave us Domino. And there's the first appearance of the real Domino because it was a, it was not the real Domino on New Mutants 98. In that, this is the actual first appearance of Domino. But there's that. So I'm easily going with Rob Liefeld. Love him. Love him. Loved comics in the 90s. Uh, that art, I was just drawn to it, how dynamic and outrageous it was. All the pockets. 
I was just imagining how much I could put in there to go fight crime. It made sense to me. So Rob Liefeld for the win. Peach Momoko, not touching it. Wouldn't touch it. It's just horrible. It's just not meant for comic books. Perfect for manga. Perfect for original art or drawing tattoos, but it does not translate to comic books in my opinion. That's just my opinion. There's plenty of people that disagree with me. Her books sell. People love them, so keep buying them. Keep her, keep her. I mean, she's an artist. You got to give her credit for what she does. I just not for me. So the next question, this was the hardest one for me to answer. It's if you could be a butler to one of these two teams, which one would it be? And the choices you have are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Wow. 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 That is a tough one. So when I grew up, I was a kid. The first Turtles movies had already came out. So I was watching that as an early age. I remember Secret of the Ooze coming out, growing up watching the cartoon. It was already around before I came around. And I fell in love with Michelangelo early on. Early on. This was my dude. And this is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Christmas special number one. Michelangelo in a 9.6. And this was A-OK to me by none other than uh, Remy to God, Slab Oprah, Remy Q Studios himself. Big thank you to him for this. That's awesome. So I loved Michelangelo. Loved his antics and goofing off all the time. Just wanted to skateboard and eat pizza. But then when I was in kindergarten, my life changed forever. Completely changed. Never gone back. And Mighty Morphin Power Rangers premiered on Fox Kids Network. And it just blew my mind after that saturday when it first premiered we were late going to school almost every weekday when they started playing reruns in the weekday mornings but then like i met the green ranger and no turning back at all and this is the mighty Morphin power rangers issue number zero one in 50 ratio variant and the green ranger is just my dude he's my jam tommy for life it's just so awesome so i was completely torn on these two and then boom like, you know, there's more there's more comics along the way. Like, you know, I've got that uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one reprint. This is the Colors Classic from IDW. You know, Hamilton Comics kicked off some Power Rangers stuff back in the day. And this one's specking out hard now, too. It's pretty crazy. But Boom Studios and IDW came together like butt cheeks, as I like to say. And we had a Turtles Ranger mashup. And this is the... Uh, this is the second printing, one in uh, 15 or one in 10 or one in 25. It's a one in something ratio, but you have Shredder holding the Green Ranger helmet all cracked and shattered. How awesome is that? Like in two huge parts of your childhood just colliding and just wow. And then, uh, you know, Clayton Crane had to do that super exclusive. I think there's either 100 or 300 copies of this one made. Uh, there's one with a blue light background, but this is that rainbow background. And it's got that crane bow to match. And that CGC 9.8. So this was just a fantastic, fantastic moment. And it really even made this decision harder having enjoyed that story. But when it comes down to it, the winner who I will butler for will have to be, boom, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And this is that issue zero, one in 100 variant in a 9.8 by CBCS, which means if I were to re-slab this at CGC, it would come back a solid 13 I know that's crazy to think, but that's how it works. CBCS 9.8 equals a 13 at CGC. All right, guys, moving right along. The next one is, oh, this was a fun one. Would you rather try to survive? Try was capitalized in the question. Would you rather try to survive an invasion by the aliens, the xenomorphs, or the predators? So would you try to survive the Alien invasion or a predator invasion? Alien predator, alien predator, alien versus predator. So this one's a tough one. The aliens are savage. I've read pretty much all the paperbacks from the 80s and 90s that Dark Horse did, which are just novelizations of the uh, of the actual comics. I don't know which ones dropped first, if it was the... Uh, Comics or the novels or the novels and comics, but I collected the novels before I started getting all the, the comics. I've been getting these for God over over ten years. I've been picking these up when I get them for super cheap and reading them. 
But it's a tough one because the aliens are absolutely savage. And if you were to read any of those stories, especially the old stories, it was not a continuing character kind of thing. Every story was a different story with different people. And one thing you learn when it comes to these aliens, there is never a happy ending. There's ever a good guy who at the end. They all die. And if one character does survive, they'll get mentioned down the road of being missing or getting picked up by the Whalen Corporation. And big corporation is huge. They're, they're probably more dangerous than the xenomorphs are. But these guys, it's a guaranteed death. And it does say try to survive. And so I'm going to have to go with the predator invasion because at least I know enough that like Arnold survived it. Danny Glover survived it. Adrian Brody survived it. You know what I'm saying? That girl in Alien vs. Predator survived it. Heck, even some kids in AVP2 survived it until the government dropped the nuke on them. So I don't know. But I think I'm going to have to go with Predator because at least if I cover myself in mud and get buck naked, they might not be able to find me. All right, moving right along. So this one was really fun as well. So the question is, would you rather marry He-Man or Tila or lion or Chitara? So we have He-Man versus the Thundercats here. Who would I rather marry, the leading star guy or girl from He-Man or the leading star guy or girl from Thundercats? Well, I'm not into bestiality, despite the fact that I run a kennel. And two, I'm not trying to get any hairballs. So I'm trying to go with uh, the Masters of the Universe on this one. So this is Masters of the Universe, number one from Image Comics. This gorgeous painted cover by none other than the legendary Earl Norm. And uh, it is a wraparound. So I did have to go freaky Louie hashtag free baggers for life, bro. Look at that. Yeah, isn't that just gorgeous? And I was able to meet Earl Norm. At uh, the Heroes Convention, uh, me and my dad went, and uh, he was there. He was awesome. We hung out and talked with him for a little bit. Uh, got an amazing uh, art print. I got it signed by him and everything. So uh, fantastic. I was glad that I was able to get the chance to meet him. Look at that. It's just fantastic. So Tila for the win. All right. Now, finally, the last question does not have to do with my personal collection, but it has to do with these guys personally. So we have Huey, Pocan Joe, and the Spectacular Spider Grandpa, the three independent guys that come together to uh, make the Blast and Stash and crew. Every Friday night at 10 p.m., these guys get together, and they either blast or stash comics while they review them. It is an amazing time. I have so much fun hanging out in the chat. These guys are a blast themselves. And um, the question is, one day, you have one day to hang out with either Huey, Pocan Joe, or the spectacular spider grandpa, who would you choose and why? Uh, so first off, I'm going to have to take Huey off the table. He's all the way out there in Oregon, and I'm not trying to fight a Sasquatch. So he's off the table. So that leaves the spectacular spider grandpa and Pocan Joe. I feel like those are pretty much even with each other, but I think it's going to have to be a sympathy vote here. And if you know Joe, you know that he can use a good designated driver any day of the week. And I think that I could be that guy to serve that purpose. So for one day, I think I could be the designated driver for Poke and Joe. So he is going to be my choice for the one I would uh, hang out with for one day. So that's it, guys. That's all seven questions. I had a blast doing this. It was fun going through my collection. I hope you enjoyed looking at some of these books and hearing some of these stories. And it would be awesome if you guys wanted to enter this contest as well. If you check in the description below, there will be a link to the uh, live stream where they announced it. And if you just look in the description to their live stream, they have all the questions on there. And any information you need to uh, know about it. Also, you can go to the Pocan Joe to his channel, and there's actually a short video where you see these guys uh, sitting with each other, actually entering the contest themselves. So you kind of see a format of what to do or what if you get an idea. And again, you don't have to do it on YouTube. You can put it on any form of social media at all. You don't have to show your face. You can do a voice recording as long as you just get it out there. And uh, yeah, let's have a blast with this. It's really fun. So I am going to be posting this on a regular scheduled day. So I'm going to double video it up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. And if you want to, if you need any help finding the information to enter this, just reach out to me. Leave a comment. Hit me up on Instagram. And uh, smash that like button on the way out. Subscribe to the channel if you want. We're really close to 800 subscribers. I have something really fun planned out for when we're going to hit it. And until next time, guys, as always, I'm Mark, but we are leaving.